Hey, what's up, everybody? Alongside Bob Holt from the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, Tom Murphy in here as well from the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, our senior analyst, Mike Irwin, as well. We're going to have a roundtable segment here for this particular segment, and we'll also come back with another one in our second block of the show. Let's start with quarterbacks. Bob, let's begin with the fact that, uh, you know, Cole Kelly, you would assume based on his numbers last year and kind of just the way he fits in terms of his experience, uh, that, you know, he'd have a really, really good jump on this position, this starting position, and being perhaps named the starter tomorrow. He's a guy who obviously played nine games last season, made four starts, had eight passing touchdowns. What about Cole? Yeah, I think he's he makes the most sense because of his experience, although I don't think this is the best system for him. Uh, I personally don't think Chad Morris is going to name a quarterback tomorrow. I think he's, I'm not sure he's going to name a starter all week. I'm sure he knows who he's going to start, but I don't think he's going to tell the rest of us, so we'll see. Tom, what do you think at this point? I'll take the other side of the coin. <laughs> I'm going to say that he will name a starter tomorrow, but I think Cole Kelly had to overtake Ty Story based on what we saw in camp. I think Ty started camp in the lead, and I think through the first scrimmage he might have been looking better. But when you glean all the information that you can from sources and what have you, you find out that um, you know, Ty Story had two interceptions in the second scrimmage. And what we've seen since then is Cole Kelly has more often go gone with the first group. So I think they're both going to play in the season opener, and I also think they're going to play one of the freshmen. Yeah, Mike, what do you think about that based on the fact you're playing Eastern Illinois in game one and playing multiple quarterbacks perhaps because you know, it's not like you're starting with an Auburn or an Alabama. This is EIU, some opportunities maybe to see a couple guys under center there. Yeah, I definitely think the freshmen will play if the game is such that they can put them in. Now, I agree with Bob. I don't think they're going to name a starter. And I think these coaches want to start Ty Story because I think they don't like the lack of discipline of Cole Kelly. And I think they're still working through some issues with him. When you have to stand behind a guy at the training table and tell him not to eat pasta, which Joe Craddock said he did, <laughs> coaches don't like that because they're not going to be able to stand behind you in a game and tell you don't do this. So I, I think they may start Ty Story in the hopes that he will be good enough to leave him in there some. And then if they have to go to Cole Kelly, they will. But I think they would rather start the guy that has worked hard and has been disciplined as long as you don't have a problem out there. And I agree with you on that. I think that he has been more disciplined, has hit the books or in the film better. But Cole Kelly has the bigger upside in terms of a, a bigger arm, harder to get down. And it's really how they plug these guys into the system. Who's going to be able to do the run pass options as quick as they want and run the ball when they need to? And Bob, when you think about that, it is a power spread offense. Could be a one back, two back, uh, shotgun situation here. You got an O line now that you've had to patch up quite a bit. The injuries, based on what you've seen in this preseason and how they've shifted guys around, what do you think about that? Well, uh, I like the right side of the line. They got two seniors over there, you know, Johnny Gibson and Brian Wallace, that have played a lot of football. I think they both got 17 starts. The left side, no offense to those guys, but they're basically on their on their third left tackle because they thought it was going to be Colton Jackson, then they thought it was going to be Dalton Wagner, and now I guess right now it, um, it's, it's Shane Clinton, no offense to him, or Kirby Adcock, but they've, they've never played in a college game before. It may feel like an embarrassment of riches when Colton Jackson comes back, and he may be back sooner than they expected, but they also get Dalton Wagner back probably game two. So then you've got some guys who, who had more experience there, but agree the left side might need a little bit of help, they might need to put the tight end or the moving back there to help chip, and they might have to run more stuff to the right when it comes to the key running plays. You know, we talked a lot about it in the preseason, Mike, you know, creating wider running lanes for these running backs. How do you think it's going to be effective for these guys in this particular offense? Well, it p appears to help. It, you know, I always had an issue with lining 320-pound guys up foot to foot, shoulder to shoulder, and thinking you're going to knock Alabama backwards. That didn't work. It, it worked against Texas Tech one time. Years ago, I don't think it ever wor really worked like that again. Uh, so I think that does help. I think they're probably hoping they can get through the first game or two and then get a couple of guys back on that left side and then at least one deep. By the time you're into SEC play, you're okay until people start getting hurt. That's where the problem is going to come in later on in the season. If you don't keep some of these uh, starters healthy in the offensive line, the end of the year, those last five or six games could be a real problem. We'll go to time on this one. Receivers, let's get to it. The fact that you got Jared Cornelius, who looks healthier this time around. Uh, Jordan Jones seems to be coming on in this preseason, but uh, it's just anybody's guess at this point who those two or three top playmakers are going to be for Chad Morris's attack. Agreed, and I think you had put Jonathan Nance in there into that top level. Jared Cornelius, 
LaMichael Petway has had a little bit of a groin during camp, but I think he'd be up there because they like being able to throw him a, a short little slant on third and four and just try to, you know, out position a cornerback and get the catch. Um, so those guys, and Tobias Enlow has run with the ones quite frequently. And so we saw him at the Beanie Bowl Saturday with the one group. So I think all those guys are in the mix. And beyond that, if, if you were to ask me who's going to lead this team in receptions, my initial thought would be I think Nance will be up there. I think Cornelius will be around the top. And I think guys like Deion Stewart, Enlow, and the others will, will need to come on. Yeah, based on that, what Jonathan Nance did last year, going into this year, how much that's going to help him, Bob? Yeah, he's a big-time receiver. I mean, he proved that last year. It was really cer certainly when, when Austin Allen was healthy, you know, but we haven't got to see much practice. As a matter of fact, I think it's probably the least amount of practice we've seen any coach I covered in 30-some years. But we've seen Jordan Jones get open deep a lot. So that's really going to be big, especially with the running backs. If they can suck those safeties in some, um, you feel like they can get some big plays with Jordan Jones. Okay, Mike, uh, don't knock me out here. Uh, we ate up too much time on this first segment. So that's we'll fine. come back. We'll start with I you. I would just say that you also have to factor <laughs> in the tight ends because I think they're going to throw to them a lot. Absolutely. I just better get to that. But uh, we'll come back and we'll talk more about season predictions coming up on the Patreon.